Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, today we are going to be talking about Dupuytren's contracture um, and we're actually going to be going through this video because of my dad who a few months ago um, sent me this photo which some of you may have family members that have sent you similar things from a hand therapist out there. Or if you're a patient or if you're a person out there in the world, you may notice that your hand maybe has looked like this or someone you know has a hand that looks like that. Um, but yeah, anyway, my dad's been bugging me for like a few months about what he can do for his hand and what's going on with it. Anyway, so this one's for you, dad. Um, and feel free to share with anybody out there that you know that has Dupuytren's or if you have patients that you want them to kind of know what the disease processes and what their options are. Um, anybody out there in the world, because there are a lot of people that do have it um, and probably more than we even know because most people don't even notice they have it until it's really severe. So anyway, that's what we're talking about today. Uh, let's get to it. So Dupuytren's is actually a disease of the fascia or the connective tissue fibrous layer um, that is underneath all of the skin, especially on our palm of a hand. Um, you know, you can compare with the back of the hands where it's like really just skin, it's loose. You can kind of pick it up, pull it. Whereas in the, in the hand, in the palm of the hand, it's really um, more tight. Like essentially it's just this anchoring structure that stabilizes everything. Um, and with Dupuytren's, um, it's actually like a disease process of the fascia where it thickens and it gets really tight and eventually kind of pulls down um, so people will actually, you know, kind of not be able to extend or straighten their finger. Like it'll literally be stuck um, in that position. And it usually starts, sorry, let me um, pull that picture up again. So you can see uh, it classically starts with a nodule, which you can kind of see my dad has right there. Um, and a lot of times people think it's trigger finger because it's it's literally in the similar area where a trigger finger nodule will show up, but it's a lot more visible usually. And then you can actually see on him where he's starting to get like that cord-like tissue, um, which is just thickening basically of the fascial band. Um, and they, they call them like cords that kind of build up in the palm. Um, luckily for my dad's case, like he doesn't have any contracture yet so it's literally just kind of in the palm he feels like it's just more tight than anything I think based on what he's told me um, but he hasn't lost any range of motion um, but for some people they'll actually be literally stuck down or some people will have um, contractures at the PIP joint as well so um, yeah that's basically what Dupuytren's is um, unfortunately there is no cure so there are treatments, there are surgical treatments available. Um, that's pretty much it at this point in time. So basically, um, the unfortunate thing is that, you know, you either have the choice of doing like one of these surgical procedures, if it's really bad, you know, they'll recommend that you do that. Um, or they'll just kind of give you information about what it is, tell you you can't really do anything for it, and then they're going to just sit and watch it. So basically the observation route. So yeah, it's kind of a frustrating um, disease for sure, I think, for people because there's literally no cure for it. It's just kind of surgery or just kind of hang in there and hope for, hopefully it doesn't get worse with time. Um, the other interesting thing about Dupuytren's is that they don't really know why it happens. Like they don't 100% know what the cause is. They do know that there's like a genetic link to it or a hereditary component. So if your parents have it, um, especially if both parents have it, you're at a little bit higher risk for it for sure. Um, they also know that it's more common in um, Northern European or Scandinavian descent. Uh, I think it's more common in males as well. Um, so there are definitely links and kind of things that they know are true, but they don't really know exactly why it, it's caused. Uh, and I actually was listening to a podcast about it as well. And the doctor that was speaking, uh, Dr. Eaton, I think Charlie Eaton, um, who's like a big, really big Dupuytren's doctor, um, but he was actually saying that it's like a polygenetic disorder. And so it's not, you know, they haven't quite been able to crack the gene sequence because it's just so complicated. They don't know exactly which genes link to it. And so that's kind of, I'll link his website too below because um, they're doing a lot of really interesting, fascinating Dupuytren's research and studies and you know, you can go ahead and be part of those studies or just at least get some more information from him. So I'll post that link below. 
So basically there are three uh, main tiers of treatment options. And again, treatment, not cures. So for Dupuytren, so basically the first category is gonna be like the open surgery um, category. So that's gonna include things like the fasciectomy or the dermofasciectomy. Um, I'm not gonna really go into details here because obviously I'm a hand therapist, not a surgeon, and this is meant to be a really quick introduction video. So maybe we can talk about it another time, but not today, <laughs> okay? Uh, minimally invasive options. So that's going to include things like the Zyaflex um, injections, which is just a collagenase that they, they go in, they inject it into you. Um, you wait usually 24 hours, maybe a little bit longer, and then you go back to see the doctor and they manipulate the finger and, and straighten it out. So it's essentially something that softens the cords. Um, the other minimally invasive procedure that um, I think is getting a little bit more popular is like a needle aponeurectomy, um, let me just, it, okay, aponeurotomy, I knew I said that wrong, <laughs> forgive me, <laughs> okay, aponeurotomy, so, and essentially that's just using like a special type of needle, so again, you don't have to go under like surgery, um, under anesthesia or anything, it's usually just in the office, and what the surgeon will do is they'll take like a really specialized type of needle, they'll numb the hand, they'll go in and they'll use the needle almost like a little tiny scalpel. And so they'll just mechanically cut the cord and then the finger will be able to be straight again. So, and then the third basically treatment option for, you know, a lot of people with Dupuytrens is just observation. So, and that's really where hand therapy can kind of come in and play this role. So there's mixed evidence, obviously. Um, there's not a lot of evidence supporting that, that hand therapy is going to be super helpful. And obviously there's no cure for Dupuytren. So your, your physician might um, recommend you to see a hand therapist. You're probably not going to go that many times unless you've had surgery. Um, but just in terms of conservative treatment, there are some things that hand therapy can offer you um, and kind of teach you a home program so that you can help manage your condition um, and make sure that you're still able to do the things that you want to do and, and need to do. Um, and so my therapists out there, you know, that's where we can really play a part and be um, a big help to these patients because they're going to be able to tell you what kinds of things, what activities they're having difficulty with. You know, you can imagine if somebody's hand is kind of in this position, it might be really hard to do a lot of different things in their day. So you can help work with them through activity modification. You can figure out what um, types of tools and, um, you know, adaptive equipment they might benefit from, um, help problem solve with them, work with them to make, you know, routines that work best for them and kind of figure out how they're going to still be able to do the things they need to be able to do. Um, and then showing them certainly like a stretching program and self-massage and things to help relieve their pain if they have pain. Um, a lot of these people don't seem to have a lot of pain conservatively, but some people do. So, kind of work with them, figure out what stretches can you do as part of your routine. You know, we almost, you almost kind of have to think of Dupuytrens as um, similar to arthritis and the fact that it, as of right now, there is no cure. So you are always going to have this disease pathway. Even if you have surgery, there is a reoccurrence rate. So, um, you know, you can kind of look up the statistics for that too, but it's fairly common, I think, for people to have recurrence in their lifetime. So even if you have it taken care of, it can come back essentially. Um, and so it's something that you just really have to get good at managing on a daily basis. And you might have to add that into your routine and be willing to take five additional minutes a day just to stretch your hand. Um, it's really not that big of a deal once you start doing it. Like any habit, it takes time and it takes the motivation to do it. So um, I am gonna show you guys some simple exercises that you can do at home. Um, and I think maybe we'll put that in like part two of the video. So anyway, this was a, definitely a very brief like overview history. Of course, if you have questions, if you think I missed something or comments, please go ahead and leave comments and um, on this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Um, and please subscribe to the channel. And we'll come at you with part two. Thanks for watching.